In April of 2019, Chicago elected Lori Lightfoot to be its next mayor. I'm Lori Lightfoot, and I'm running for mayor. That's why nothing will distract me from bringing real change to Chicago. That's her daughter Vivian in the background doing Fortnite dances. She's the first black woman mayor we've ever had and the first openly gay mayor of an American city this big. She's the former chief executive of Chicago's Police Reform Board, and she campaigned on raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour and electing, rather than appointing, members of our school board. On top of all that, she's married to a former librarian. Sounds like a progressive icon, right? Except many of the most progressive people in Chicago hate her guts. So, how did all this happen? Well, let's go back to September of 2018. Rahm Emanuel was finishing up his second term as mayor of Chicago and preparing for a tough re-election campaign in February. He could take credit for keeping Chicago's troubled pension system afloat, at least temporarily, and a lot of downtown businesses were recovering from the recession. But he'd also presided over the closing of 50 schools, mostly in predominantly black and poor neighborhoods. This was traumatic for a lot of kids and families. See Ghosts in the Schoolyard by Eve Ewing if you want to hear more of that story. And on top of that, Jason Van Dyke, the police officer who shot and killed teenager Laquan McDonald, was on trial for murder. Early in Emanuel's second term, a hidden video of McDonald's shooting was released to the public, and it became clear that Mayor Emanuel hadn't prevented the police from covering that video up. If you want to learn more about that, I highly recommend WBEZ's podcast, 16 Shots. So the mayor was vulnerable, and a lot of people noticed. By September, he already had several candidates running against him. Lori Lightfoot, head of the police Police Oversight Board, and Amara Enya, head of a neighborhood chamber of commerce, were specifically challenging him from the left. But even some of the more establishment candidates, like Paul Vallis, a former superintendent of Chicago Public Schools, and Willie Wilson, a wealthy businessman who runs for something in basically every election, challenged the mayor on not investing enough money in poor neighborhoods. It was shaping up to be a competitive election based on some really important issues. And then, this happened. As much as I love this job and will always love this city and its residents, I've decided not to seek re-election. So Rahm was out, but he still couldn't resist weighing in on the election a few days later. My view is the voters are going to, uh, their candidate or mayoral candidates is not, the list is not done. It's going to shake out for about a month and then the voters will make a smart decision of who can fill that office. What he's saying here is that a lot of big-name politicians who wanted to be mayor but didn't think they could beat him would now throw their hats into the ring. And just a couple of days after Rahm's announcement, that's exactly what happened. The first of these big names to throw their hats into the ring was Tony Preckwinkle, the president of the Cook County Board. She'd served in that role for eight years, and as an alderman for many years before that. She campaigned on many of the same progressive policy ideas as Lori Lightfoot, electing school board members and raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. But she had political insider status, which meant a lot more potential for endorsements and fundraising. The second big name to join the race was Bill Daly. He's a Democrat, but he's certainly not as progressive as Lightfoot or Preckwinkle. For example, he didn't like the current system of the mayor appointing all the school board members, but he also didn't like Lightfoot's and Preckwinkle's idea of the voters electing all the school board members. Instead, he proposed a system where the mayor would appoint some members and local parents groups would appoint the rest. And his plan for making aldermen less corrupt was not having as many of them? On top of that, his brother and father were both former mayors of Chicago. Combined, the Dailies had run Chicago for more than 50 years. The city government under the Dailies was notorious for its corruption, but a lot of mostly older, whiter voters were still loyal to them. And Bill Daley used to be the chief of staff for President Barack Obama, so a lot of people thought Barack Obama would jump in and endorse Bill Daley, basically clinching his victory. This never happened, by the way. And a few months later, Susana Mendoza joined the race. She'd just won an election for Illinois State Controller, basically the person in charge of managing the state's budget. She didn't talk a lot about her policy ideas, but she'd been a state representative for a long time, and people thought she'd do well with Chicago's large Latinx population because she's Latina. By the end of 2018, 14 candidates had joined the race. Well, 15. Do you know who you're voting for for mayor? I'm actually registered in Arizona. Oh, that's okay. I'm not on the ballot. Well, actually, 26 if you count people who didn't get on the ballot but actually tried to. It was quite a group. 
racially diverse, from all parts of the city, people in their 20s, and people in their 70s. On Tuesday, February 26th, 2019, the election happened. In Chicago, you've got to win over 50% of the vote to become mayor. So if nobody clears that majority, the top two candidates face off in a runoff at the beginning of April. With so many candidates, a runoff seemed inevitable. So the only question was which candidates would make it into the top two. Here are the results. Tony Preckwinkle came in second, which is not surprising given her political connections and her high amount of fundraising. But Lori Lightfoot came in first, and that was an upset. A lot of people thought Bill Daley was a shoe-in for the runoff. He had the most name recognition, the most political connections, and by far the biggest fundraising margin. But he finished third. So why did this happen? Some of it came down to the luck of who was in the race. Bill Daley blamed Jerry Joyce, another fairly centrist candidate, for stealing votes in some conservative white working class neighborhoods that should have gone to him. But there's something that should be said for Lori Lightfoot's campaign in particular. She got into the race early, back when Rahm was still running, and she managed to convince a lot of white middle class progressive voters that she was the real deal. So Chicagoans would have to choose between Lori Lightfoot and Tony Preckwinkle, two candidates with similar progressive values, and it should be said, two black women in a city that's a third black but has only had white mayors since the 1980s. Since both candidates had similar politics, the race kind of became a contest for big name endorsements, and one by one, almost all of those big names lined up behind Lightfoot. People who endorsed Lightfoot included establishment figures, losing candidates like Willie Wilson and Susana Mendoza, and most of the downtown business community. Some folks from the left also endorsed Lori Lightfoot, including Will Calloway, an activist whose work led in large part to the release of the Laquan McDonald video, and there were also some endorsements from the right, including at least one openly Trump-supporting alderman. Tony Preckwinkle did get the endorsement of Chance the Rapper, and we think she was waiting for an endorsement from her friend and neighbor Barack Obama, but that endorsement never came. Interestingly, most of the activist community got behind Preckwinkle. They didn't trust Lightfoot because of her past as a prosecutor and a member of the police department, even though she was on the police reform board. To a lot of activists, Lightfoot seemed to view aggressive policing as a solution to the violence in Chicago, rather than as part of the problem. In a debate, she even suggested using some of the school buildings Rahm Emanuel's administration closed as training grounds for new police officers. But the activists and other Preckwinkle supporters were in the minority. In the April election, 75% of votes went to Lightfoot. She won in every ward. Because there's another thing that shook up the election this past year. In the fall of 2018, Ed Burke, who's been an alderman since the 60s and is basically the face of the corrupt political machine in Chicago, got his office raided by the FBI. Apparently, he tried to shake down the owner of a Burger King in his ward. So voters took a hard turn against the establishment. This news hurt Susana Mendoza worst. She'd been a longtime friend of Ed Burke. He literally played piano at her wedding. But the news also didn't help Bill Daley or Tony Preckwinkle, who'd both been in Chicago politics for a long time. It did help Lori Lightfoot, who'd never held elected office before. She was also one of the candidates to propose changes to Chicago's whole political system, like having term limits for aldermen and mayors. Four days before the runoff in April, WBEZ Public Radio in Chicago hosted a debate between Preckwinkle and Lightfoot, a debate I happened to be live tweeting. Towards the end of the debate, someone in the audience asked a question about a perennial problem. How will you fix the potholes, especially in poor neighborhoods? Preckwinkle wanted to find a solution within the current system. She proposed creating an app where people could report potholes and using an algorithm to make sure city workers were fixing potholes evenly in different parts of the city. Lightfoot proposed disrupting the whole system, changing the asphalt formula so fewer potholes would form in the first place, and if construction companies with cushy contracts objected, firing them. And that moment, I think, sums up the entire election. Preckwinkle wanted to make change from within the system, while Lori Lightfoot wanted to make some waves, and maybe some enemies. Voters were ready for a change, and that, 
I think, is why Lightfoot won. Now, Lori Lightfoot is mayor of Chicago, with a mandate from voters across the political spectrum. She wants to raise the minimum wage, as I said before, and invest a lot of money in poor neighborhoods, but she's got a huge budget gap on her hands. She wants to work towards more equity in funding for schools, but she's got a long, protracted teacher's strike on her hands. So now everyone's wondering, in the coming years, who will Lori Lightfoot disappoint? And who will she pleasantly surprise? Thanks for watching! If you want to see more about the candidates' positions on issues, or how different wards voted, look in the description below. I'll leave you with the best bit of footage I found while I was researching this video. Apparently, Rahm Emanuel trained as a ballet dancer before he went into politics. Here's a video of him at a summer party just really going for it. Keep on dancing, Rahm. Just, you know, not in the mayor's office.